Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the new Air Force One Sirocco Brake Barrel Springer on test. But first up, I mate on an evening session targeting rabbits. Right, I'm out on an evening session to try for a few rabbits and there are a heck of a lot on this holding at the moment. Um, the field I'm standing in, there's no stock in here at present, but it is used for ponies um, and that is quite a concern. Because of the way that the rabbits burrow, one hedgerow here in particular is absolutely littered with those burrows and if a pony were to put its hoof down one of those holes, it could break a leg. So with that in mind, I'm not gonna be discriminating between larger and smaller rabbits. Anything we see is fair game tonight because quite frankly, a small rabbit has got the potential to do just as much damage and be just as much of a pest as a bigger rabbit. The added advantage also being that small rabbits tend to be great to eat. The tactics I'm gonna be using are incredibly simple. It's that time of the evening when rabbits are soon gonna be venturing out to feed. So all I'm gonna do is lay down on my belly and hopefully ambush them as they venture out from cover. Now the only really important thing is to put myself in the right place because laying down shooting prone can get very uncomfortable and that's particularly noticeable if you're not getting any shots. So as I said, one bank in particular seems to be absolutely riddled with rabbits at the moment. So that's the area I'm going to start on. So let's go over and have a look and see if we can't get a few. Right, well I've set up along what is quite a narrow stretch of this field, which means I'm fairly comfortably within range of the area that I wanted to target. And it does appear to be a real hive of rabbit activity. We actually put a couple down when we arrived, but more than that you can just see that whereas the grass here is still quite long and lush, over around the, uh, the hedge where the rabbits seem to have most of their burrows, the grass is much shorter, really closely cropped where they've been nibbling it down and there's just a lot of burrowing and earthworks where they've been excavating the soil there. So it should yield a few shots. Um, now what I've done, I've set up in the prone position, several advantages to that. The first one being that I'm down nicely off the skyline so I shouldn't be too visible. Now unless the rabbits prove to be quite uh, twitchy I'm not even going to wear a head net. I've also got a barn behind me so I've got a bit of a backdrop anyhow. But also I'm using the, the scope cam so that all being well you'll be able to see some of the action as it unfolds. But because I'm shooting prone it's going to be less tricky shooting through the screen than usual because I can use the bipod. So that's just gonna hopefully give me these really nice steady shots. It should be very straightforward shooting. A very quick point worth making about shooting when you're using a bipod. Now, your left hand, obviously your right hand if, you, if you're a left-handed shooter, but generally your left hand is left almost redundant because the, the fore end of the gun is being supported. And a lot of people don't know what to do with it and they'll either try and grab the front of the stock or hang onto the bipod. Now through doing that, you're introducing more movement from your body into the, the pod that's supporting the gun and really doing away with the advantages of that support. So what I find to be the best thing to do with this spare hand is to pop it behind the butt end of the gun. And that does two things. Firstly, it provides even more support for the gun. My fist's down really solidly on the ground, so it's not really introducing any additional movement. But more than that, through rolling and squeezing that fist, I can make tiny adjustments to the position of the gun. And that's, that's a great way to adjust aim by very small, very precise increments when you're lining up for a shot. So in my opinion, this is by far the better place to have that spare hand making maximum use of it. 
Now obviously I don't want to talk too much because we really want to allow peace to return to the countryside and hopefully give those rabbits a chance to emerge back above ground. But the final point I will make is the importance of range finding. That's a relatively still evening. I'm using the bipod so if chances arise a little bit further away I can take slightly longer shots this evening. But obviously because of the curved trajectory of the pellet I'll need to use hold over and hold under to compensate for that and I'll need to know what distance the target is away from me when I'm taking those shots to get that right. Now, rather than messing about getting the rangefinder out and wiggling that around when there are rabbits out, the best time to do it is now while you're settling in, you've caused a bit of disturbance, just as well cause a bit more and get it all over and done with now. And basically, I'll pop out the rangefinder and ping the range to any prominent features along that line, trees, troughs, fence posts, things like that, then I can use those as reference points. Once I've ranged them, the rangefinder goes down on the ground and stays down on the ground. I don't need to wave it around when the rabbits come out. I can just look at where they are relative to the markers that I used when I ranged them. That'll give me a gauge to work out the distance to the target so I can give appropriate hold over or hold under if it's needed. You do need to do your homework on the practice range so you know where to aim at different distances. The best way to do that is to shoot paper targets spaced out at 5 metre intervals so you can map your pellet's trajectory and use the right aim points to compensate for its rise and fall. With all the preparations done, it's just a matter of being patient and waiting for the rabbits to come out. Fortunately, we don't have to wait very long this evening. was a good start. Had to give that one a bit of a squeak to get it to sit up but at about 25 meters it was a very straightforward shot. At that range the pellet would have been a little bit higher than zero so I gave it just a touch of hold under and as I hope you'll be able to see in the footage it was a very very clean kill. A successful ambush hinges on being in the right place at the right time. This area certainly is riddled with rabbits and as the evening wears on they can't wait to come out and feed. was about the same range as the first one. Another really swift dispatch and again pretty easy shot from the support of the bipod even with the hindrance of shooting through the screen. And if you needed any convincing of just how bad the rabbit problem is here, there are three out at once now, though I hadn't spotted the one behind the brambles on the right. Well, there were actually two out then. That shot was about... 35 metres, so a bit of a longer one, but pretty much 
bang on zero with this setup. I was hoping for a moment that the other rabbit was going to hang around and offer us another shot, but it did bolt back into cover. And now we've got two out again in the same place. Watch the one on the right. That was that same spot at about 35 metres again. And again, there was another rabbit out in that time. It looked for a moment like it was going to linger, but it had more sense, made itself scarce before I could get that second shot in. We've edited out the quiet spells to stop it from getting boring but I'm still only having to wait about 10 to 20 minutes between shots. three in a row now from that same spot. Once again, it looked like a really precise headshot. Now it's, it's likely that some of my wobbles are gonna be exaggerated through the scope cam, but I hope it really does just make the point of how precise shooting can be when you're shooting off a bipod like this. It looks for a moment like this rabbit is going to bolt back into cover, but it makes the mistake of lingering in full view. And there's another one. Now I talk a lot about the importance of striving to get these clean kills. That was certainly the case with that one. That rabbit was absolutely polax, wouldn't have known what hit it. Now, kills like these hinge on landing that pellet in exactly the right spot. And it's so much easier when you're shooting prone like this. It might be a bit uncomfortable, but the extra stability really does pay off. Right, well, I've touched on the fact that shooting from the prone position can get a bit uncomfortable. I've spent quite a while on my belly now. The action's really tailed off and the pins and needles are starting to creep in, so I'm quite eager to get moving. But I'm pleased with how it's gone from this spot though. We've had quite a few rabbits and the thing that I'm pleased about that is really not just from a pest control point of view, but also the fact that they're destined for the pot. Now, still got a little bit of light left, so I'm gonna pick up, stretch my legs, have a bit of a walk around, and I may even find another spot to settle down again, and see if I can bag a few more. A great evening out ambushing rabbits there. And now it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. This week we'll report on location from the Northern Shooting Show. Taking place at the Yorkshire Event Centre last weekend, this show is in its fourth year and has surely become an essential part of the shooting industry calendar. 
It's a big one for air guns in particular, with many of the biggest names in air gunning filling Hall 2 at the show. Before we get to them though, we spoke to Basque about the state of general licences and when we might see a resolution to the licensing saga. Members are quite rightly quite concerned about a number of, uh, a number of issues. You know, we've been prevented from uh, protecting livestock. We've all seen the videos of uh, lambs with their eyes pecked out. We've been prevented from protecting crops. We're representing the needs of the people that use those licenses, those essential licenses, and make sure that the way forward is the right way forward. Despite these legal issues, it was clear that exhibitors were having a great time at the show. Pelpax told us what was working well for them. Very busy, especially yesterday. Uh, everyone was outside until it rained, and we're right next to the door, so yeah, crowds just came flooding in. Um, it's been our been first good. year here, so we didn't really know what to expect. But it's been, yeah, it's really good, flat out. And that's why we've had a lot of interest. We've got some show pieces, so we've got the Zaboria Kozak here. Um, so we've been taking pre-orders for that, uh, ready for when we get back to the warehouse tomorrow. It's been a ballpup design, they're very popular at the minute. Um, with this one you can choose various different stock options, you can have uh, brown or black ash, or you can have uh, walnut. That uh, walnut stock is a loaf of wolf barrel, you can get the long and short version, so depending on how many fills you want, uh, you know, depends on what length you'd go for. One some Terminal 2.2, incredibly accurate, lightweight, compact, brilliant gun. They're absolutely storming the market at the minute for us. Outside the halls, the air gun rangers saw lots of trade over the two days, with the now familiar Air Arms Experience making an appearance. We're running the Air Arms Experience to let people have a go at various different disciplines. Uh, we've got bench rest, uh, HFT and the have a go ranges for the Air Arms Ranger Rifles. Uh, we've got most of the Ranger Rifles on the, on the uh, lanes. Uh, TDR, TX200, so a complete comprehensive range for people to come and try and enjoy. Uh, people who've done air rifle shooting before but they haven't tried the particular disciplines, so it's the uh, first time for a lot of people. Um, we're getting a lot of young people as well, which is what, we, what we're trying to do really, get young people into the sport. Um, we worked alongside with British Shooting with the target sprint um, and that's proving quite successful. Um, and this, 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 is, this is just another opportunity to try different sport disciplines. Next, we stopped by to see a brand new prototype at the Brocock stand. And this is the Brocock Concept Light. It might not be the finished name because it's a concept rifle, but it is very light. Tiny little rifle, 3.6 kilograms, 177.22 and 25 calibre, up to 40 foot pounds in 25, but also of course a 12 foot pound version available. Side cocking bolt, new hammer system, humor air regulator, all this in this tiny little package with an adjustable button, so you can set it to the requirements. While you've got the adjustable button here, you can actually fit one of the new uh, prismatic scopes from MTC Optics. And this is a brand new 10x30 model. That's right, 10 magnification with such a tiny little package. Side parallax from 10, well, from 6 yards really, to infinity and a huge field of vision. Actually twice the field of view you would get on a normal 10 power scope. So this tiny little package, which also comes with an adjustable button. We also have a slightly larger version of this scope available, which is 12 by 50. 50 mil objective, 12 times magnification. And this has three times the field of view of a conventional 12 power scope. So you actually see three times as much on this scope. So there we are. We have this is called the Atom, this is called the Mini. It's the prismatic scope from MTC, and they're mounted on the broker concept line. There was something new for pistol fans too, as Hull Cartridge showed us their latest Virac air pistol with a Cerakote finish. This is the Virac entry flight flight like Bronze Star. Um, it's a Cerakoted finish. It's another series of the stars. <coughs> Obviously, we have the Black Star and the Silver Star. This is a Cerakoted finish, so it's rock hard, it's really tough. Um, there's more and more tactical pistols selling, so we wanted sort of something really different. Virac have listened to us and, and produced this little beauty. Um, it's out at retailers now, uh, we've, we've finally got them coming through. Uh, RRP is 386, uh, comes in 22177, around five and a half foot pounds, so perfect for blinking in your back arm. We absolutely love doing the Northern Shooting Show. Uh, we get a lot of customers coming to see us as well, at, you know, shops as well, and loads of really happy customers coming to feedback, so it's brilliant for us to exhibit here. Fans of FX rifles were in for a treat. 
Rowan Engineering has launched a new accessory designed for those who shoot in FX in target disciplines. So this is the um, single shot loader for the FX Impact. It's, uh, it's a new product that we've uh, designed and it was uh, following really a request from a couple of our customers. Uh, they were kind enough to, uh, to loan us a rifle. It's, it's collaboration between um, the customer and uh, ourselves to, to produce a load of the FX. And we've also had a quite a lot of requests for other uh, FX uh, rifles. So we're looking at uh, manufacturing um, different loaders for, for the FX range. Over at the shooting party stand, QIS pellets were going down a storm as more and more shooters realise they're the real deal. The whole concept of a Chinese pellet being a premium product being very alien to many people, me included, but the quality of these are superb. When we first brought them into the country, immediately a buzz developed on, on social media. Um, it went completely viral, and our first shipment, we sold a metric ton of pellets in under a week. I've never known anything like it. This latest order that arrives around the 16th of the month, um, we've quadrupled in size and that's over 80% pre-sold and I think what's happened is that 15 or so years ago people wouldn't have thought of buying at a premium price a pellet made in the Czech Republic and now happy to move on to a pellet made in the People's Republic. And finally, Carles isn't a name many associate with Erginning but that's about to change. The optics company has released a K1050 scope that's perfect for FT. K1050 is available in two models, the K1050 and the K1050 field target. Um, yeah, this is quite a unique scope, but obviously because of the high magnification, giving you often 10 to 50 magnification. Um, with uh, You've got elevation control here as well as windage. Um, it's on uh, second focal plane. But uh, the feedback today at the show uh, has been very, very positive from the sort of air rifle guys and field target. Um, this seems to be very, very sort of popular choice for them, and there's been a lot of interest today, and particularly from the field target and air rifle guys. That's all we've got time for. We'll be back at the Northern Shooting Show next year. That was the Egg and Show News. Air Force One has a reputation for delivering decent, affordable kit, and this week's test gun is no exception. The Sirocco is a conventional, brake barrel, spring-powered gun which retails for £119.99. It comes supplied with open sights, but you can also add a set of telescopics, mounts, a gun bag and pellets if you go for the combo package which still only costs £179.99. At 113 centimetres long the Sirocco is an adult sized air gun but it's not too heavy. The synthetic stock helps to keep weight down and it only tips the scales at 3.5 kilos with the scope and mounts fitted. It actually handles very nicely and I've really enjoyed shooting it over the last few weeks. The black synthetic stock is ambidextrous and it really suits the gun. It's also very robust so it should stand up to some pretty heavy use. There are grooves along the long forend and on the pistol grip and the whole stock feels like it's very lightly stippled which really helps you to get a secure purchase even in the wet. Gun fit is actually pretty good for an ambidextrous stock and the cheek piece has enough rise to ensure good alignment when you're using a scope. There's actually very little recoil and the soft rubber butt pad helps to soak up what little kick there is. Accuracy comes courtesy of a 45cm rifled steel barrel and you can choose between 177 and 22 calibers. Finish and engineering are very tidy, especially when you consider this air gun's price point and the low sheen black finish that's been applied to the metalwork really matches the stock. The Sirocco comes supplied with True Glow fibre optic open sights which are great for plinking. The green rear element is adjustable for windage and elevation and I like the fact that the red front element is housed inside a tunnel to protect it from knocks and bumps. The cylinder is machined with dovetail scope rails which even feature an arrestor plate to prevent mounts from creeping. In my opinion, this air gun is certainly accurate enough 
to justify the addition of a telescopic sight. And if you go for the combo package, you get a 4x32 PAO Topaz scope, a decent little optic that really suits this air gun. This compact scope has a mil dot reticle and finger adjustable one quarter MOA windage and elevation turrets. It also comes supplied with flip up lens covers to keep the glass clean and a decent set of two piece mounts. The 2.2 calibre test gun is knocking out a muzzle energy of just over 11 foot pounds. That's a fair amount of clout, yet it's still surprisingly easy to cock. The relatively long barrel helps by providing good leverage, and the cocking stroke is further assisted by the sculpted cocking aid, which gives plenty of grip. Once the barrel's locked down, pellets are loaded direct to the breech. Because the cylinder's fairly long, you could fit an even longer scope without the risk of it getting in the way during cocking and loading. The lock-up mechanism looks and feels nice and secure, and the barrel snaps back into position with a very positive clunk. Cocking the gun automatically sets the safety catch, and it can also be manually reset, a feature that I'm always pleased to see. It's sensibly positioned at the rear of the cylinder, safely away from the trigger, yet easy to operate with your thumb. The gun is safe when it's out in the rearward position and it's ready to fire after you've thumbed it forwards. Triggers can make or break an air gun and this one has more than exceeded my expectations. The gold finish of the blade looks neat and its gently curved profile gives plenty of feel. The first stage is incredibly short, but the important thing is that the second stage breaks crisply and with absolutely no creep, which makes it very predictable. So, that's what the AFO Sirocco, distributed in the UK by the shooting party, has to offer in the features department. Let me pop out a target and I'll show you what it shoots like. Well, that was good fun. One thing I will start by saying is, well, you can probably see Anne here that we've got quite a windy day today. So I've pulled the target in from the usual 30 meters down to 25 meters because I really don't think that a group that's getting blown around everywhere by the wind is gonna tell you very much about a gun's performance. But nonetheless, the 2.2 caliber test gun still turned out a relatively respectable group in these conditions. What I will say is though that that group was shot with the pellets that came supplied with the gun. Now I have been using better quality pellets and that has tightened up the grouping, certainly keeping it sub one inch, even out to 30 meters in calmer conditions. The spring has got a bit of a twang to it, but then I wouldn't really expect anything different from a spring gun at this price point. But the recoil is still fairly modest and very manageable. As I said earlier, the trigger is surprisingly good and that results in pretty good accuracy that I think makes this gun capable of live quarry shooting out to mid-range. 
I try hard to manage my expectations when I'm testing affordable air guns, but it is tough to find fault with this one. It's a robust, functional air gun with some nice features and no silly gimmicks. It is hard to believe that it costs less than £120 and still under £180 if you go for this combo. It is a decent gun but it's at home on the plinking range and for some pest control assignments. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.